Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbilalamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah as I've reminded everybody, yeah, subhanallah we are in the month of Rabiul Awal, yeah, which is the month of number 3. So do make the effort to well as according to the sahaba, yeah, of anhum, they would make dua to Allah. The six months after Ramadan, right, they will make dua to Allah to accept the deeds of Ramadan. And the following six months before the next Ramadan, they would make dua to Allah to um, to to allow them to meet the month of Ramadan. We can simply say, well, either in your own language, or you can say in Arabic, Allahumma baligna Ramadan, yeah, which means, Ya Allah, allow me or allow us to meet Ramadan. Yeah. Um, so this is time for us to... Um, truly, truly make dua to Allah that Allah will grant us with the ability to uh, to be still alive, yeah, but, uh, so, that we can, so that we can meet the, the the next Ramadan, yeah. Now, so let's continue, inshallah, in in our recitation of the Tafsir in Surah number three, in verse number one seven one, inshallah, yeah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. يَسْتَبَشِرُونَ بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They rejoice in a grace and a bounty from Allah and that Allah will not waste the reward of the believers. Now we still, we were talking about Battle of Uhud where some of them, uh, I would say, yeah, a lot of uh, the, the, the early believers, yeah, they took this, in, they take, took part in this battle and well, even though we understood that the the Muslims lost the Battle of Uhud, but those who were martyred, as I can remember, there were about seventy martyrs in the Battle of Uhud. Yeah, they, it, it was quite a severe blow to the Muslims, um, especially also with the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uncle Hamza um, who who were mart who was martyred in the Battle of Uhud. Um, so there were 70 martyrs, and, and as I said, um, we, we discussed before, right? Um, two main issues that Allah was trying to remind the Muslims um, that if anyone, including us, of course, in not, not specifically for the battles, but if in other issues that we face today in 2022 in London, for example, yeah, if we disobey Allah, we disobey Prophet Muhammad, sallam, expect some severe consequences in this life yeah and of course if you don't repent to Allah then in the, in the hereafter so we talked before um, in the battle of Badr for example one of the main reasons why Muslims were defeated was in battle of Badr Allah actually ordered the Muslims or the Muslims because they were, it was the very first battle that they should wipe out or try to be very fierce and merciless to the disbelievers to teach them a lesson yeah um, but instead, the, they decided to take them, I think they were, I think 70, if I'm not mistaken, the um, captives were taken as ransom. And because of that, they, they, they had to, they, they returned them and they returned for some money and some, um, what do you call it, um, things in order to, to ransom them. So this is what, what against what Allah has ordered. Yeah. So this is the first, first reason that the Allah's command wasn't fulfilled. Yeah. Secondly, was on the basis that we, this is a very common reason that we know that they, they refused to, um, or some of the, especially the archers, yeah, they did not obey the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's command to, to stick or to stay at that position until they were given green light by the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam himself. And instead, they were, were quite busy trying to get the booties of the war. And therefore, their position remained and was unattended. And again, the, the, the disbelievers the, led by Khalid bin Walid was able to defeat the um, the Muslims, yeah? Um, and at the same time, um, they, the Muslims suffered quite a heavy loss. And, but however, we, we understood from Hadith, for example, right? If we intend, because jihad is jihad, isn't it true, right? The, the intention to do jihad is always there. You will get rewarded whether you are killed in jihad, or whether you survive or you're defeated. The reward is still, still there. That's why, whatever the circumstance or outcome, outcome of anything that we do for the sake of Allah, as as this verse said, yeah, that the the Muslims they 
they rejoice is in the grace and bounty from Allah. Yeah, especially you and I know, right, brothers, when we, well, especially in difficult circumstances, when we make the effort to please Allah, right? Um, so, for example, in this um, financial crisis, and we discussed before so many times in our classes in the mosque, yeah, and that no matter how bad we are affected financially, we cannot be in the same level as those who are in Pakistan today. They suffered, who suffered from all these losses of, of accommodations and even their family members. We cannot be in the same level of poverty as people in Syria, in uh, Yemen, yeah, uh, in which millions we discussed before how they were eating just grass, yeah, for their meals, grass, yeah. And like in Afghanistan, we, we know, yeah, from, well, I can only tell you from what I see from the mainstream news, yeah, but BBC and all this were showing um, marks of operations on the kidney where they had to sell the kidneys. Some of them even sell the children in order to survive. Um, not sure that I agree with this, of course, yeah, but at the end of the day, um, my point was we are not um, as bad as some of these people, yeah. So that is why even if our circumstances are not good and we still obey Allah right, in difficult circumstances, that means we help others, we still donate to Pakistan, donate to uh, Yemen, Palestine and all this, for sure Allah will be pleased with us. And this is uh, quite important that in difficult circumstances, um, especially when we may, meet, we may be in need of things, but we give preference to others. Yeah, um, a quite good, quite a good story. If I'm not mistaken, is is um, I might be mistaken, right? I think it's in Surah number fifty-nine. Yeah, um, just the verses I cannot remember. Fifty-nine in verse number. Um, yes, and in verse number nine. Yeah. Um, in verse number nine, uh, in the meaning, right, that that the they give the emigrants, those who did jihad, the a preference over themselves, yeah, even though they were they were in need of that. Yeah, this in Surah number fifty-nine, verse number nine. Yeah, um, you have to know, right? So this was this was talking about the um migrants as in the muhajirin from mecca that came to medina yeah uh, literally uh, i had to g g give the similarities of course it's not the same all right but similarly it's called well the asylum seekers in it true right they but this is upon allah's command yeah that they would migrate from mecca to medina in order to um, establish islam yeah so that um, Islam flour flourished in Medina first before it spread, alhamdulillah, yeah. So this is quite interesting verse when they give preference over themselves. That means they give this muhajirun preference over themselves. Anybody remember what, on what basis was this? It's, it's an amazing story, yeah. Luan, can you remember? What is the tafsir about this verse? Which, which verse was that? 59 over verse number 9. When these people they give others preference, preference against them because we were talking about right about how poor we are. Mm -hmm. We still have money to donate, isn't it true? We cannot be in that position. I got no money to donate, isn't it true? In general, right? Because mm -hmm. people in uh, Syria, in Pakistan, and all these places are much more in uh, much much more in need of help than us. Agreed, right? Mm -hmm. So. I'm just trying to apply what Allah said in the Quran, right? In this verse 59, verse number 9, that they give preference on others, to others, other than themselves, right? And there's a very interesting story about this. Can you remember? I don't, I don't think so, Stad. Okay, well, when I say something, you remember, inshallah, right? So there was, well, there was, a, apart from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making an announcement about Talk, talking about talking about this person had completely nothing to eat and all this. So asking the Sahaba, who will host this person? So this person, without thinking, right, 
Next time, always, con always consult your wife. All right, is it true? All right. Um, without thinking and just invited him to the house. Right. The wife, of course, they were welcoming him, but the wife was quite alarmed because there's only one portion of food left in the house. One portion. Right. I think it's, for me, it's one of the most touching things I, can, I ever heard, and I'm sure you heard it before. So only one portion of food. And of course, with them, because of their generosity, they want the guests to have it. So they even say, oh, the children haven't eaten yet. Yeah. Then the husband said, don't worry, right? We make noise, we pretend that you're cooking in the kitchen and make sure the children play with their toys. And when children are tired, right, the children will sleep, right? And... Yeah, it's just that, right? The, the children were, were play, play, played with the toys and they were tired, they, they fell asleep without, without eating their dinner, right? Now, how to resolve this issue? Because you do not want the guests to be guilty, right? That one portion of food is only given to them. So what did they do, right? They decided to switch off the lights. Oh, the, so they got no lights then. So they, 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 they blow the candles, right? And the whole place become dark, right? So they put the food on the guest plate and on the plate are just stones and they pretend to eat because guests cannot see, isn't it? True? They pretend with the noise or they pretend to eat, but actually there's nothing on their plates. And this is how how amazing some of them are, which, which well, we can emulate, isn't it true? Because Allah is, Allah is really pleased with them, right? In Surah number 59, verse number 9, right? Because they they gave preference to others yeah um against what they need yeah and in the last part yeah allah said well and whosoever is saved from his own uh, greediness yeah and then such are those who will be successful so when allah said this for sure inshallah with allah's mercy right they will be entering paradise. Successful. This is Allah's promise. Allah will never break His promise, right? So, brothers, all I'm trying to say, and I say especially to myself, perhaps applying to ourselves, right? Perhaps you don't need such expensive shoes, isn't it true, right? Perhaps you don't need such expensive clothings and all this, or perhaps you don't need don't need any clothing at all to shop, even though there's a lot of sale, right? So what thing coming soon? Was it? The Black Friday is coming soon, isn't it? In November and all this, right? No need to buy for yourself, but at least save, uh, use the money to help others. Perhaps that you give preference to others, Allah will make us among those who are successful. And it's quite important that we we correlate one verse to another. Yeah. And so this is this is as it is that we we have to um, understand, right? That um, in relation to Surah number three, the tafsir that we are, we are doing, as if Surah number three, verse number one seven seven one, yeah. Even though they, they, some of them, um, survived, yeah. They are not among the seventy who are who were the martyrs. And always remember, yeah, the hadith about intention. Right? If you have intention to do a good deed, and you did not do a good deed for whatever reasons, like. Like they, they intend to die as a martyr, but did not die as a martyr. What what is the uh, reward from Allah? They will get as if they die as a martyr, even though even though they 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 do not die, and because if not, it's not fair. Isn't it? we, we talk about Khalid bin Walid. He was always leading the Muslims after the Battle of Uhud. He took Shahada, and after that, again, of course, with Allah's will, he he was always leading the. Uh, he was a commander of the army, and and he he fought. Uh, for the sake of Allah, right? He won battles after battles and battles. But again, he did not die as a martyr, right? Don't tell me Allah is not merciful enough to not to reward him, right? As uh, among those who, as if they die as a martyr. So this is about intention, isn't it true? That if you intend to do a good deed, but you did not do the good deed, right? Um, for reasons only Allah knows, yeah? Then you will get the reward of that deed. So if I intend to go to the mosque from, from my house in Plasto to Regents Park Mosque, for example, it is about 45 minutes, one hour. Yeah. Well, you know, right, London transport, um, the underground not working 
and I planned quite early, for example, I left the house quite early, but still I was late for the Salah, I missed the Jama'ah, I'll get the reward of the whole Jama'ah. And this is how merciful Allah is. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, Hadith continues, if if you do that good deed with the intention to do a good deed and you you ha happen to able to perform the good deed, you get the reward of 10 to 700 times. Yeah. The Hadith continued, if you intend to do a bad deed and you did not do the bad deed, whether for the sake of Allah, not because of something else, yeah, then you get the reward of one deed. And if you intend to do a bad deed and you did do the bad deed, you get the the sins of only that deed not multiplied by 10 to 700 times. And this is again, this shows Allah's mercy yeah, that we should uh, continue yeah, to strive. Perhaps the thing that we are, we are not able to, to fulfill, right? We, we cannot fulfill it. So for example, right? And again, this is another hadith, right? Was it about the this person was donating money to one, one, one person, and it turned out that the person happened to be a prostitute, right? Um, and then he came back, he asked Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would Allah accept my deed of donation? Because he didn't know that he, she was a prostitute. Said, yes, yeah, perhaps the money that you gave would stop her from prostituting herself, right? Another, and then the next day he gave to another person, it turned out that the money to another person, the person happened to be a thief. Again, he complained to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, your deed of donation will be accepted. Perhaps the person received the money would stop stealing, right? And then the, the third one, uh, the order might be mixed, right? I, I just, this is just rough translation. He gave to another person who happens to be rich, right? And then he he found out and he was quite depressed. He came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would Allah accept my deeds? I said, yes. Perhaps when you donate the money to this person, it, be, it would become a, well, a motivation for him, uh, the, this rich person to help others. So, brothers, all I'm trying to say is that nothing in terms of our intention to do good deeds, even though it doesn't reach the person, or it doesn't fulfill because of other reasons whom Allah only knows, yeah, we still get the reward of the deed. And it's quite important for us to understand this, okay? Now, so let's move on to surah number three in verse number 172. Now, this is quite interesting, right? Because most of us may not know that after the battle of, in the middle of the battle of Uhud, there's another battle, right? It's not in the Quran, it's not in, it's only in Tafsir that you, when you read, you will know this, yeah? Now, surah number three, verse number 172. الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْقَرْحِ لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا مِنْهُمْ وَاتَّقَوْا أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Those who answered the call of Allah and the Messenger وسلم, after being wounded, for those of them who did good deeds and feared Allah, there is a great reward. Now, can you imagine, brothers, as I said before, in the Battle of Uhud, the Muslims were quite, were quite badly defeated with 70 martyrs and a lot of wounded. Even Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was wounded, as you know. I think he lost his teeth and this this skin was really as uh, the helmet sunk into the skin. Um, he was very badly wounded. A lot of Sahaba were badly wounded. Yeah. Now, the the Quraysh happily, right? They left knowing that they have won this battle of Wahud. On the way back, they were discussing with themselves, huh? But we we didn't bring back any captives, right? Muhammad is was still alive. We have not really defeated the army fully, isn't it true? Right? So so this was when they decided to have to turn back and finish out the Muslims. Now imagine you were in the position of the Muslims then, right? Heavily many people were heavily wounded. Yeah, even Prophet was was very badly wounded. And Allah informed him that the enemies are coming back to finish them off. SubhanAllah, right? What would you do, Luan? Sorry, Stan, you caught up. Say again, sorry. Now, did you li listen to what I said the last five minutes? Yeah, yeah, of course I did. <laughs> My question was, let's say you are in the position, you were in the Tamar Rasulullah 
you, you, we were defeated, right? Mm. Battle of Uhud. Mm. Badly wounded. And then to be informed, enemies coming back to kill us off. What would you do? I mean, I've never been in that position before. I'd like to think I would stand my ground if I was a firm Muslim. It is, but it's quite difficult, isn't it? Right? Yeah, of course. You're already demoralized. You know that you did a mistake. You know Allah is not pleased with you. And then you were defeated because of that. And then and then and enemies coming back, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Prophet Muhammad mobilized people who would who were in, in the battle of Uhud to confront the enemies again. And this is something in which is quite Alhamdulillah, it's like the Sahaba is very different from if if you notice about the Sahaba, right? And uh, uh, the, the above but from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were so different from the Sahaba of the Prophet Isa Alaihi Salam and the Sahaba of Prophet Musa Alaihi Salam. What happened? So so let's discuss about this first before I go on to the other Sahaba. Now, and and they were mobilized. I think there were about seventy of them again, right? Confronting all the enemies, not sure how many enemies will come back and try to finish them off, right? Especially they wanted to kill Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And so they 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 traveled and they they stopped in this place called Hamra Al Asad, yeah. And this is that's what the, the the battle is called Battle Hamra Al Asad, yeah. And because they they stopped there, they ready to confront the enemies. And this is with Allah's. And again, this is this is part how of how Allah was so pleased. And that's why they will, they will always, under the Deir Joshua, they will always be the best Ummah. Remember, the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a lot. But the best of the best of the best, always this time of the of the Sahaba, they're the best Ummah, right? Uh, or the best people in the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Because they, they never say, oh, I'm so tired, you know, can't be bothered, right? Uh, they, they never, they have this so much love for the deen and so much love for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu tell them, okay, let's forget about all your misery that you are injured, go out, we need to face them again. And this is something I, I don't, and I'm, I'm, I was in the army as you know, for two and a half years. I know exactly how it felt, the tiredness, I mean, we had to be in the jungle for about uh, in Singapore, of course, yeah, for about three nights, and of course, there's no fight, and that itself is so tiring. We have to dig trenches, we have to stay up the night, and and we eat all this ration food. It's not about nice uh, kebabs and all this. Um, and of course, I have to tell you, right, because we are not allowed to go to all these shops and buy food, but of course, we we sneak into it. If we were caught, we get we'd be in prison, definitely, right? But we quite desperate. We're quite hungry, right? So I know exactly how it felt like the tiredness of this Sahaba in the time battle of Uhud, and yet they immediately get ready and they were facing the enemies who who came who were coming back to slaughter all of them. And when they look from the far. They saw the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and his and the Sahaba were ready to to meet them or to to fight back. Immediately they turned back. They said, "Okay, we we'll meet them next year." They were very scared, right? Karbala, why Karbala? Who's this? Now we we are talking about this battle, right? This battle called by uh, the uh, in middle of the Uhud, There's a, another battle. Nothing takes place, but it is a battle called uh, Hamra al Asad because it's where the the Muslims stopped to face the enemies. Yeah. Now again, we talk about the reward. The intention in the, the intention was to fight jihad, and even though no fighting took place, there will still be rewarded as a participant of one of the battles of Allah. This is an amazing thing, right? It's not easy. Now, so let's talk about the Sahaba, right? And it's quite interesting. Compared to Abu Bakr, Uman, Uthman, and etc. Yeah, may Allah be pleased with all of them. Compared to the, the companions of other messengers, the great messengers. Yeah. So we talked about the companions of Isa alayhi salam. How, how do they compare? 
the bravery. Anything. Who 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 is better? The pro of course the the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, companions for Why? sure. Because um, a majority of them, or well, majority of them, stuck by him and uh, yeah. Uh, like didn't like like you said, remember when you said um, the companions of Isa alayhi salam? Only a few said, "Oh, uh, Isa was the the prophet uh, of Allah," and yes. the rest they they deceived other people. What's the story? Oh, so long. <laughs> Luan, it's very important, no? I I know the story, alhamdulillah, but I'm just gonna mix up because uh, the, the um, basically the the, the story. So of Isa. the first day, the companions of Isa alayhi salam. What what did they call it in the Quran? Um, uh, anybody? No, how are you? Isn't it true? How are you? Mm. How are you? Right? Um, yes, so as as Luan said, right? Um, it's quite disappointing, honestly, if you didn't read the tafsir because you think that they were closer, the closest companions of Isa, yeah. Right? There were 12 of them in this in this room and Isa alayhi salam was running away from the Bani Israel, wasn't it true? Who was who were trying to kill him. Immediately when he entered the room, the first thing that he said, he declared, among you, can you imagine this is equivalent to Umar, Abu Bakr and all this, yeah? Among you, there'll be people who disbelieve in me. And he asked this next question, who among you will replace me and I promise you a place beside me in paradise. It's a huge uh, reward, isn't it true? From Allah, of course, right? So you expect many to put up their hands, isn't it true? But it turned out how many people put up their hand? There was only the youth, the young one. Only one. One out of 12. And this is so the youngest one, right? And again, the question was repeated three times. And because he got no time to waste because he was being pursued by the enemies, right? And they said, Allah changed the face, isn't it true? The, 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 this one that pulled up the hand, the youngest one, and Isa and changed the face, yeah? And on that basis, uh, Isa after that was lifted to the sky, right? So enemies came into the room and said, oh, Isa is there because the face changed, isn't it true? So this person who volunteered this young, young man, uh, was being crucified, left 11. And even out of this 11, right, one divided into three groups. The first group said Allah was in the room and he went to the sky. Complete fabrication. But talking about the best people. Second group said the Son of God was in the room and he was, he went to the sky. Again, another complete fabrication. And the third group said the messenger of God was in the room and he was lifted to the sky. Right, and this and this is this shows the the difference. I'm not talking about difference in methods, but this is this is difference between aqidah and intro. The belief is completely off, right? So this is the components of Isa alayhi salam. How about components of Musa alayhi salam? What did they do? Are they equivalent to the Abu Bakr, Uthman? Are they equivalent to the same faith and all this? No. What happened to them? They worship the the bull or the cow, wherever that statue was. The cow was in it, true? And <laughs> and this is this this had this were about quite a lot of them, right? They they and they were specifically chosen because they were the best, the best in terms of belief, right? And and not when when well, so when. Musa al went up to this mount, mount called Mount Thur, right? I believe, well, allegedly I, I, I climbed that mountain, not I climbed, sorry, I took a camel up, up the mountain halfway and I went and walked all the way up um, in Egypt, right? In a place called St. Catherine's, yep, today, yeah. So he went there for 40 days, came back, came back down with this tablet, right, the Torah, and what did he find? Well, the, 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 some of them were worshipping a calf. You're talking about the best people, right? Not only that, after that, what happened? 
because they they were not convinced how can how can you go up and come down with this book i don't believe that you talk to allah right and what did what did they ask next we want to see allah isn't it true what did allah do allah killed all of them isn't it true and it was only through the pleading of Musa alayhi salam. Musa was saying to Allah, right? Ya Allah, how can I explain to the villagers, the people, that you killed the best of them? How could your message be able to pass to the people? Now, this is quite important. Of course, Allah, with his wisdom, right? Al-Hakim, yeah? Al Alim with his knowledge, Al Khabi with his with his awareness of things. He of course understood even before Musa Hassan was pleading to him that this is just to show them that you know how dare you right? you want to see Allah right and it's quite important to understand this and these are, these are the best people. So my question again, the companions of Musa Hassan and Isa Hassan and the companions of Prophet Muhammad Hassan, right now you see. Subhanallah, why we should love the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, isn't it true? Because there's so much on a different level coming to other companions. And not only that, right? If you see the things that they do, and they said that reading the sirah, especially of the Sahaba, right, is so important. If, we, if you read the sirah, you will find that, oh my God, I, I did almost nothing compared to these people because they did so many things, Subhanallah, right? They sacrificed their life, everything for the sake of Allah, yeah, in the, in the name of Islam. Subhanallah, because if not for the effort, if not, of course, from Allah in the beginning, right? In the first place, but if, of course, if not for the effort of this Sahaba, you and I won't be talking like this, isn't it true? Yeah. So this is this is how it was, right? That when the Battle of Uhud was over, the Quraysh on the way back, they decided to, well, we haven't done anything. We didn't even kill Muhammad. Let's turn back and wipe them all out because they're, they're in, in this form of weakness, they're demoralized. And they came back and Allah informed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and immediately, without hesitation, it's like some adrenaline, adrenaline flow go into them, went into them. Immediately, 70 of them faced the enemies. And because of that, the enemies were very scared and they, they said, okay, perhaps next year we're going to come back again. And they left. And this is amazing, it's intro, right? That we we know about this story, right? And 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 just remember, they, they call it the Battle of Hamra al Asad. Hamra al Asad is just a place where the Muslims stopped, right, to meet the enemies of Allah. Okay. Now let's continue. Yeah, with the next verse one seven three. Surah number three, verse one seven three. الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حزبنا الله ونعم الوكيل. Those that means the believers to whom the people said verily the pagans the people have gathered against you a great army therefore fear them but it only increased them in faith and they said Allah alone is sufficient for us. And is the best disposal of the affairs for us. Now, it's like, it, it's, it's not surprising, isn't it, your brothers, that the hypocrites are always causing problems. They said, La ilaha illallah. We discussed about the whole topic about, 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 about the munafiqun, isn't it true? About the munafiq, yeah? How much they, they hated Islam, they hated the Muslims. The only reason why they, they, well, they, they profess the shahada was because at that time, yeah, they, um, Abdullah, Abdullah bin Salul, yet the, he was about to be the king, wasn't it true, of, of Medina. And Islam came and he wasn't the king and he hated everybody and therefore um, he became the chief hypocrite, wasn't it true? Um, and a lot of hypocrites existed and therefore we discussed before how even in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, right? And um, verse number two to five, yeah, what about the the mu'minun, right? The believers. Um, six to seven were about the disbelievers, and eight to twenty were about the 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 hypocrites, the munafiq, right? And it showed the importance of recognizing who they are. Yeah, as it is, 
in this verse, right? Remember, the, the Quraysh were about to come back and instead of, well, they're supposed to be Muslims, right? Muslims, instead of helping the Muslims to, well, to prop up their courage and to, um, what do you call it, um, help them to motivate them. This is what they said, right? Oh, you know, look at them. The Quraysh are coming back. They are in great numbers. You need to fear them. What did they say? Hasbunallah wa ni'malullah. And this is, this is one of the best phrase that we can ever use in, in terms of difficulties, isn't it true? Right? In terms of financial crisis, right? And what, what we are facing. What should we do? Hasbunallah wa ni'malullah kill, which means Allah alone is sufficient for us, is the best disposal of our affairs. It's quite important, brothers, that we have this um, attitude or mentality of leaving everything to Allah. Of course, of course, of course, of course, all right? We do need to tie the camel. So in the sense that if you have no job if, if, or, or you lose your job because of this financial crisis, don't be dismay, but you do need to make the effort. Okay, go to a job center or look around for jobs. And that's quite important instead of, oh, it's okay, I just take benefit. That That is not acceptable, isn't it true, all right? It is important that we, subhanAllah, we do try and um, make the effort in order to um, to seek his provisions in a halal way. Yeah. So this is very important yeah, that we we use this phrase many times yeah, in our lives. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Right? This is in surah number 3, verse number 173, which means Allah alone is sufficient for us. He is the best disposal of our affairs. Now, this phrase was being used two times. Anybody knows on what other two occasions was this, this phrase, has one use? Anybody? 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 Now, one of them, one of them, right, was used by Ibrahim al Islam, was intro, right? When he was, well, he, before he was thrown in the fire. Why was he thrown in the fire? Well, because he destroyed the idols, isn't it true, right? Well, so called, the so called gods were destroyed by a mortal human being. Doesn't make sense, isn't it true? But again, he destroyed that and left the big X on the biggest, biggest uh, idol. And when asked by the Quraysh, who destroyed who, who destroy our gods? And he said, look at these, the big, he big, uh, the biggest idol. There's an X with him. He's the one who destroyed. And of course, and this is where he was, Ibrahim was trying to make them think, right? That of, obviously, everybody knows this statue cannot do anything. So why are they worshipping him, the, the, the idols? Why are they offering the idols food? Why are they seeking protection from these idols? It doesn't make sense, isn't it true? Because the idols cannot even protect themselves, right? And this is this is how um, we, we do need to understand that after this incident, the Quraysh was very displeased, even though they, they know Ibrahim was telling the truth. Yet, but they wanted to punish him and by throwing him in the huge fire. And even if you read some narrations about this, even Jibril was offering to help and said no. Because he relied only on Allah. And he made the again same similar. He said, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah alone is sufficient for me, is the best disposal of our affairs. So this is the first thing, first, first incident that, that this phrase was used. Right, alone is, alone is sufficient for me. He's the best disposal of our affairs. The second one was when Prophet Muhammad was, was informing the, the Sahaba. Before that, of course, whatever things come from Prophet Muhammad, it must come from Allah, right? Before that, it didn't happen before. But at that moment, he was asking the companions, right? His companions, um, where do you think? is a trumpet that will be used to be blown 
by Israfail on the day of judgment. The companies was got confused why he asked these questions, and of course it wouldn't know the answer. And he said, Salah Salah, the trumpet is actually now on the mouth of Israfail. That means it's just waiting for Allah to give him the command to blow the trumpet and he will blow and the whole world will come to an end. The companions were in tears. When they heard this for the very first time, they were in tears. Inconsolable because it's, it's, it's very scary to know that the world is going to come to an end. And Prophet Muhammad was advising them, don't cry, don't, don't be fearful, just say, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah alone is sufficient for us. He is the best disposal of our affairs. That's it, isn't it true? Right. What can we do? If Allah today, 2022 in London, some of us may be losing our jobs. Some of us perhaps are not, that there's not enough money to pay the bills, right? Uh, not switching on the heater because not whether you have to choose between eating or to, to choosing between warm warmth. What can you do? Except asking Allah to help, isn't it true? The first thing that you do, of course, is to seek Allah's help by saying, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. So this is this is very important that we use this phrase at all times because subhanAllah, brothers, again, we discussed before, and I always repeat this verse in surah number 12, in verse number 20, when Allah said, Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. In the last part of Surah number 12, number 20, Allah informed us in the meaning, Allah has a full power and control over all his affairs. But most mankind do not know about this. So in the sense that sometimes we, we feel that it is we who bring or who put food on the table. It is we who are able to pay for the bills. We think that because our hard work, therefore we are able to get, get this money at the end of the month in our bank account. We forgot, brothers, that at the end of the day, it is Allah, isn't it true? Allah, our Rabb. Allah, whom we always say in our Salah al al Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin, right? In which we say, All thanks and praise go to Allah. Who is Allah? Rabbil Alamin. He's the one who creates, maintains, sustains, protects, guides of all his creations in truth. He is our Rob whom we made a promise when Adam was first created, right? When Allah wiped his back and all of us had appeared in front of Allah. This is in Surah number 7, it was number 7172. 7172, yeah? Surah Al Araf. In which Allah, when, when after we light up in front of Allah, Allah asks us, Am I not your robe? And we say, Bala, Shahidna, yes, we bear witness. So we, we made a covenant with Allah that we will not forget. He is the one who is going to provide for us, going to sustain us, maintain us, protect us, yeah, and guide us, guide, and, and He's the one who maintains all His. The creations, the trees, the plants, the, the seas, the clouds, the rain, everything from our Rabb. We forget about all this. And this is how when things become desperate, yeah, we need to come back to the source of all the, the one who maintains us. And this is that we need to come approach all of us. Didn't we say in our Fatiha again, Iyakana Budu wa Iyakana Stain? Only to you we worship and only to you we seek help. Is it true? So we must, inshallah, right, put our effort and into our acts of worship because it's our purpose of life. Isn't it true? Allah said, I do not create jinn and mankind. I said, they, they should worship me. This is our purpose of life. Therefore, if we have any problems, we need to come to him first. And of course, we need to tie the camel, right? We need to ensure that uh, we seek other forms of employment, right? But every eventuality, every, every single penny that we earn, 
and we're going to earn everything comes from Allah and we must never 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 forget this but let's start tomorrow inshallah it's an interesting topic about how we make dua that Allah will make us among the few because in many verses of the Quran brothers Allah always said right most of them are not grateful right very few people are grateful in all this right therefore this is very important uh, dua which I'm going to teach you tomorrow inshallah that we want Allah to make us among the few always know that the path of truthfulness is is very lonely right to follow the right path sometimes or many times in fact you get abused your family members your cousins your culture people in from from your background and all this you always say what is this right where do you get all this from actually all we're trying to do is for the quran and the sunnah but the fact that many of them are just following the forefathers some of them i know you know in a muslim country they're not even praying yeah they just have the name muhammad abdullah and all this but not praying but the one who is on the right path is so few that we make dua that Allah will make us among these few people. And it's quite important that we understand this. Right? So tomorrow I'm going to tell you about how, even for me, for my personal experience, about how even when I grew up, right? Well, my family members you were cursed by neighbors, they hated us. Um, yeah, we were isolated completely. They in the end, oh, one by one. Because alhamdulillah, both, both my parents were teaching, right? Islam. And one by one, they knocked at the door. They attend classes taught by my parents, one by one, right? Um, because what we try to teach them about, this is from Quran, Surah, this and that, this is from Hadith of Bukhari, Muslim and all this. It's quite strange because it was never taught like that. It was all about, oh, you must do this, 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 uh, stand in the corner, recite this seven times, you said this 70 times and everybody just do it because the elderly is always correct according to them and i've said it so many times brothers our knowledge of islam does not come from our parents it does not come from um, our grandparents our uncles and aunties it must come from allah isn't it true the funny part is allah is trying to be very clear to you and me right acts of worship all these have been completed, isn't it true? That's why, for example, we know in Surah number 5, verse number 3, when Allah says, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alakum ni'mati wa raditu lakum islam adiniyat. This was revealed many years ago after the last sermon of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam in Arafah. And this verse was revealed that this day I have perfected your religion for you. I have completed my favors upon you and I've, I have... Um, chosen for your Islam as your way of life. So everything must come from Allah and His Messenger, Allah Islam. Is it true? And the funny part is that even I'm talking about my culture, for example, right? The, it's so funny that Allah was supposed to be the one as our Creator, right? He was supposed to be the one who taught us how to worship him, right? The best way to worship him. And yet we are so busy body, right? We create our own things, right? Because this is supposed to be the best way. But who's the one who's who are going, going to face on a day of judgment? Allah, isn't it true? How can we come up with our, our own things? Even though there's no hadith, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam did not do this, um, even though Allah never taught us this, and then you come up with this. What do I mean by this? For example, like in my culture, when somebody died, they recite Al-Fatiha. Now, did Allah taught us this? Yes, Al-Fatiha is used in the prayer, but only on specific things. Remember the rule of thumb in acts of worship, acts of worship, right? Everything is haram, not allowed, unless you have an examples in the Quran and authentic hadith. In acts of non-worship, everything is allowed unless the Quran and authentic hadith said no. So I can drink anything that I want, but hold on, the Quran said about alcohol, isn't it true? Right? I can eat anything I want, but hold on, the Quran said about pork, al-khinzir, right? Talk about 
the dead meat, blood, and all these you know, many things that we are we are supposed we are, we are being restricted to eat from we are prevented from eating, right? It's an order from Allah. So this is very important that we understand this. Yeah. So coming back to this seven verse surah number three verse number one seven three. But we do need to memorize this, inshallah. This, this is one of the du'a of des desperation. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Another du'a of desperation, right? I would uh, I would think is in surah number 21, verse number um, 87. Du'a, du'a Yunus, alayhi salam. Why was he desperate, right? Because he was in the belly of the whale, wasn't it true? Because he disobeyed Allah and Allah punished him. I'm sure... In many parts of our lives, brothers, right? When we disobey Allah, we would be, we may face, come across a very difficult situation, right? Either Allah wanted to test us, or it's a punishment from Allah, as straightforward as that. And only, only you yourself know what is this trials that coming, coming by. And it's quite important that we we recognize this. So you know, Sallallahu Alaihi as you know, he disobeyed Allah by abandoning his people, his ummah. And as a punishment, what did Allah do? Well, he was he was chosen, he was in a boat, the boat was about to be to, to capsize a huge thunderstorm, right? And they need to sacrifice somebody and and they draw lots. Three times it was on you know and he got no choice but to, to to be he was thrown over, thrown out of the sheep, wasn't it true? And then he was eaten by the whale. And in the in the belly of the whale in the darkness, in the three layers of darkness, darkness of the night, darkness of the sea, and darkness of the um, belly of the whale, right? He made a dua to Allah. And all of us should know this, neutral. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal dhalimin. None has right to be worshipped but you. Subhanaka, that means glorified are you. Inni kuntu minal dhalimin. Truly, I have been the wrongdoer. And when he made this du'a, subhanAllah, we know from the tafsir, even the angels went to Allah. Even the angels asked Allah, aren't you going to answer the du'a of your righteous slave? So perhaps when we say this du'a in our salah, in our moments of weaknesses, when our moments of um, vulner vulnerability, right, when we are desperate, perhaps the angels will help us by asking Allah to answer our du'a. Isn't it true? Right? So this is quite important that we we pick up these various things from the Quran, right? In order to to use this, like it or not, we are Allah's slaves. We will be tested by Him many times. Therefore, brothers, right? I will, as, and I say to especially to myself, use these things that Allah says in the Quran, right? Use this because it's very important that we we implement what Allah taught us in the Quran. For our own benefit. So two things we learn today, inshallah, right? In Surah number three, verse number 173, 173 right? Hasbunallah wa So remember when you say this, please know the meaning, which means Allah alone is sufficient for us. He's the best disposer of all of us. The second one, Surah number 21, verse number 87, right? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al right? None has right to worship but you. Glorified are you truly have been a wrongdoer. Again, when we we, we, say, we say this, right, you can cut into hadith, right? Um, remember the etiquettes of making dua, right? First of all, we need to glorify Allah. Secondly, we do need to ask Allah for, no, ascend blessings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? As etiquette of making dua before we say our dua. Thirdly, we ask for forgiveness. And this is why if you look at Ibn Kathir, right, in Surah number 21, 187, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that none of, none of us, who ask forgiveness with the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam will have the du'a rejected. So, subhanAllah, technically, if you want our du'a to be accepted, use this du'a of Yunus alayhi salam, right? So I repeat again, etiquette and making du'a, first of all, uh, praise Allah, simple, right? Alhamdulillah, uh, subhanAllah, and all this, yep. Send blessings to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad and all this. Yet, thirdly, seek forgiveness from Allah. Right? And I would strongly um, encourage everybody to use the du'a of Yunus Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah 21, verse 87. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal dhalimin. Right? And last word, before we even mention about, about our du'a, seek Allah 
Allah's help using his beautiful names. Intro, I think is it in surah number seven, yeah? Verse number one eighty. Right, let me check. Seven in verse number one eighty, yes. Yep. Walillahil Asma ul Husna Fadahu Biha. Right. And all the beautiful names belong to Allah. So call on him by them. Right? So even we before we say, Ya Allah, grant me provisions and all this. Yeah, what do I use? Allah's name? Ya Rab, yet, Ya Razak, which means the one who provides, yet, Ya Karim, the generous one. Yeah. If you want to Allah, Allah ask Allah for forgiveness, you can say Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, yet. Um, ya Tawab, yeah. Um, ya Ghafir, Ya Ghafur, yet. And and many things, yeah. Um, so these are the things that we we we. Of course, the most important is Ya Allah. So it covers everything. Yep. So I hope today's talk, inshallah, will able to allow you and me to understand yet the importance of seeking, coming back to Allah, seeking His help, and seeking His um, ability to. Only he is the one to be able to lift us out from every difficulty. Isn't it true? Right? The worst thing some people are going to fortune tellers. They they go to other things. They go to the grave. Completely shirk. Yeah, you have to be careful. And we do want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Yeah. So today's our last tafsir lesson. Next lesson will be, of course, one after coming from Umrah and all this. Uh, at the end of the month, inshallah, yep, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who will be whom he will be pleased with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us in the street path at all times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allow the Quran to guide us continuously and to provide us with um, a form of heal and, and a form of guidance at all times in our daily lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, forgive us our, our sins and shortcomings and grant us, all of us forgiveness. Subhanak Allah wa barakatuh shudu ala ala anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ila subhana rabbika rabbil izzata ma yasifun wa salamu ala al-mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakum al-khair uh, hope to see you tomorrow insha'Allah if I will talk at 3 o'clock in room number 2 yeah jazakum al-khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaykum